uh, what are the basic hydraulic principles. So when I say hydraulics, the hydraulic words, um, hydra means water and oilus means pipes. So combining these two words, the meaning in simple English is water in pipes. So that's how we define hydraulics. Now the advantages of um, hydraulics um, or using water um, uh, to get some work output over the electrical devices is that the actuator, so first of all what is an actuator? Actuator is um, a device where we actually get the work output. So actuators perform high force uh, transmission at low speeds. Okay, so this is an advantage uh, of a hydraulic system over an electrical system. A single source of power from the pump can be utilized uh, to pump a number of actuators or multiple access devices. So this is again an advantage that uh, by using just one single source of power that could be uh, a pump and a motor and we can run the actuators. Actuators as I mentioned is a, uh, is a device which can be uh, from where you can actually get the work output. Now actuator can be a cylinder okay so connected to the cylinder um, you know we have a piston on the cylinder so let's say uh, the water enters from the rear end of the pistons uh, so that uh, the energy that uh, that water has what we do is we can convert that energy into mechanical energy so that cylinder piston arrangement is actually an actuator okay where we are getting the work output so power source can be located in a convenient location. So power source means like the, the motor and the pump. Okay, so no overheating and burnout. Okay, as we can see, especially um, with the electrical devices, we might have overheating or burnout. We do not have this sort of a situation here in the um, in the hydraulic systems and practically noiseless transmission. So there's no noise there. If I compare these hydraulic systems with the pneumatic systems, so first of all, what is pneumatics? Okay, in a hydraulic system, we use fluid as the working substance. It can be water, it can be oil, okay, uh, whereas in pneumatic systems, we use air, okay. Um, so we use air to get the work output in pneumatic systems. If I compare this, the uh, the hydraulic systems with the pneumatic systems. Um, in with the hydraulic systems, we can have very high pressures. Okay, we can achieve high pressures within the systems. So that's an advantage because that high pressure can actually give us more work output. Noiseless and has very smooth operations. Um, it is. Uh, incompressibility because uh, you know in the pneumatic systems we can compress the air to um, um, to a maximum whereas with the hydraulic system we have sort of uh, almost an incompressibility state means we cannot compress the uh, the water or the oil um, to large amounts so high incompressibility characteristics of hydraulic fluid transmit high force at low speeds okay and also we can achieve um, precise control uh, um, in hydraulic system if I compare it with the pneumatic systems. Um, physical principles I'll also discuss these uh, some physical properties of um, um, the fluid or the um, um, the water or oil that we actually use in hydraulic systems. Um, what are the physical principles of that? First of all, let's talk about the mass. What is a mass? Mass is the quantity of matter contained in it. Okay. So, for example, um, if I compare it with the force, force is force is like the mass times the gravitational acceleration. So, if I have a body which is on the surface of this Earth, it will have the same mass like either you take it to the moon but the weight of that body on the moon will be different from what we have on the earth okay so the quantity of matter contained in it measured in kilograms now volume because these are the terms that we'll frequently be using in hydraulics and also in the pneumatic system what is the volume the space occupied by a body measured in cubic centimeters so for example if we have water in a container 
So if we can measure the volume of the container, like by multiplying it with the height, with the height, with the weight, width, with the length, okay, height times width times length, that gives us the volume of the water. So these are the, some terms which we'll frequently be using in uh, hydraulic systems. Physical principle like the weight, as I mentioned, force of gravity acting on a given mass. Okay, so the unit of the weight is Newton. Okay, because um, mass remains the same, mass of a body remains the same, but the gravitational acceleration, as I mentioned, if you take the body to a uh, to moon. Um, the gravitational acceleration will be different, so the weight of that body will be different from what you will observe here on the surface of this Earth. Specific weight is actually the weight of the fluid divided by the volume of the fluid. Okay, so the ratio of the weight of the fluid to its volume is called as the specific weight. So weight per unit volume of a fluid is weight density, which is weight density is equal to weight divided by the volume of the fluid. So these are the uh, few basic terms that we will frequently be using in hydraulic and pneumatic systems. Density, again, it's a very important term that is frequently used in hydraulics and pneumatic systems. It's actually mass per unit volume, and the symbol for that one is rho. Okay, so density is equal to um, mass per unit volume, uh, M divided by V. V stands for volume, and rho is the density. Relative density is actually the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a standard substance like water. Okay, um, again, this is a relative term, ratio of the density of the substance, whatever the substance that we want to measure, whatever the density of that substance is. Um, and we compare it with the standard substance like water. Okay, so that's what is called as the relative density. Energy, again, energy is um, a word that is frequently used in either in hydraulics or pneumatic systems. What is energy? Energy may be broadly defined as the ability to do work. Okay, so in hydraulics, the energy transfer takes place from a prime mover or input power source to an output device or the actuator. So as I previously mentioned, that actuator is actually um, is a device that actually gives us the work output. So the output uh, energy that we get is actually from the actuator. There are different forms of energy. We can have a potential energy, which is the energy stored in the system due to its position in the gravitational field. We can have kinetic energy, which is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its motion. Okay, so if a body is moving, it has a certain um, energy. Uh, internal energy, which is the energy stored within the body on uh, on account of both translation and rotational motion of the molecules in the liquid and gaseous state. Okay, so like we have an internal energy stored within our bodies. Okay, so that's an internal energy. The next definition is that of power. Again, this is a term that is frequently used in um, um, in hydraulics and pneumatic system. Power. How do we define power? Is actually equal to force times the average velocity. So if we have a certain body and we apply a certain force on that body and that body starts moving in a certain direction with a certain velocity, then uh, multiplication of that force with the velocity gives us the power. So rate of doing work is actually power. So measured in terms of the amount of work done in one second. The basic hydraulic principles are, there are three important theories uh, about the hydraulic. Um, one is the properties of the fluid, like the liquid or the hydraulic oil or the, uh, or the um, substance that we actually use in a hydraulic system, which can be oil or water, whatever. Hydrostatic laws, pressure properties. So when I say hydro, hydrostatic laws, means if a water is stationary and definitely it will be exerting some pressure at a certain point um, within um, 
um, the volume. Okay, so that's the, that's that's what is called as the hydrostatic uh, pressure. I'll discuss this in in, in one of the uh, next slides. So hydrostatic laws, pressure properties, hydrodynamic laws, pressure and flow properties. Okay, so basically we discuss the properties of the fluid, hydrostatic laws, and hydrodynamic laws. So when I say the properties of fluid, what are these properties of fluid? Now a fluid has a viscosity. Okay, what is a viscosity? The internal resistance to flow. Fluids internal resistance to flow. That's what is called as the um, viscosity. Now, how can we measure the viscosity? So basically, there are two methods to measure the viscosity. First of all, um, it is measurement of the shear value. Okay, um, so. Um, they will definitely, if a fluid is flowing, there is a sort of a shearing of um, uh, the fluid um, um, on, a, on a certain surface. So if we can measure that one, that, that's how we can actually measure the um, viscosity. The second one is the measurement of time required to flow. Okay, So the time that it, the fluid takes to move from one location to another, it's called, um, and if we can measure the time, we can actually measure the viscosity of the fluid. Now there are two types of uh, viscosities. First of all, we have an absolute or dynamic viscosity, okay, uh, and the second one is the kinematic viscosity. What are these viscosities? Absolute or dynamic viscosity, um, kinematic viscosity um, is actually equal to um, absolute viscosity divided by the density. So first of all, we have an absolute viscosity, and then from there we can actually derive the kinematic viscosity. And the formula is uh, kinematic viscosity, which is um, given by uh, a symbol named uh, rho, um, sorry, mu, and that is equal to um, absolute viscosity divided by the density. Okay, so viscosity index again indicates the lubrication quality of oil used in a hydraulic system and is the rate of change of viscosity of oil within a given operating temperature. Okay, that's how we define the viscosity index. Indicates the lubricating quality of air oil used in a hydraulic system. Now, have a look at this one. Um, a steel ball which was dropped into these different oils. Which one has the highest viscosity? What do you reckon? Uh, which one has the highest viscosity? D? Uh, yeah. What about the others? Do you think it's B? A? Do you reckon it's A? Yeah, I think it's uh, D because if it is, it has a higher viscosity, it means that it will uh, create greater resistance uh, to the body that is within that tube, okay? So the greater resistance is um, given by D, isn't it? Okay, that's what is, that's how we define the viscosity, means it's a shear sort of thing uh, that um, um, it's actually, um, it's actually providing a resistance to flow, okay? So it's, uh, the oil is um, giving some resistance to the flow of the ball, okay? So um, the oil, um, in D definitely has the higher viscosities. Do you agree with that? Okay, hydrostatic principles. So first of all, what is hydrostatic or hydrodynamic? So we discussed this previously. Hydrostatic is uh, like at a certain point we have um, the, ex, the fluid will exert some pressure, okay? So um, that's the hydrostatic pressure we have 
And hydrodynamic is what? Um, it's not just only the pressure, but also the flow of the fluid, okay? So hydrostatic is just the static pressure that is exerted at a certain point. Hydrodynamic is the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure, which is the flow related to the flow of the fluid. So there are three containers with different shapes, but the same height. Which container has the highest hydrostatic pressure? So what do you reckon? Which one has the highest hydrostatic pressure? C. Yeah, that's correct. Um, because C, the fluid, um, we have more fluid um, uh, in C, okay, we, that occupies more fluid. And, um, you know, that will exert more pressure at... Um, at that point, at this point here, let me show it you, show it to you with the marker. Okay, yeah, so if you want to know the pressure at that point here, this point, okay, P3 definitely will be more uh, because, um, you know, it, that container contains more fluid, okay, and the weight of the fluid is actually exerting more pressure at point, uh, at this point here, okay, at that point.